beautiful people hope this finds you well i have a beautiful medicine story for you as promised i would return full of wood smoke full of starlight and a story or two so i'm going to gently um read to you some of what <laughs> i have penned over the last few days um all kind of woven from the experience and experiences that I had last week. I was sharing with you that um, we were honoured to be hosting um, a medicine lodge, a sweat lodge, um, on um, my dear dad's land. Um, and these are some of the thoughts that have come from that some of which I have wrote and some of it is really woven into an experience that I had some time back yet that that experience is just as these do is just widened it's like the medicine pieces the jigsaw pieces as I gaze into the flames of this sacred fire I take a breath and I look skywards beyond where I am a moment that feels like it lasts for eternity I am carried held and rooted in and among the everything I sense her behind me she is in the unseen the invisible the hidden and the subtle yet I know and feel she is there. She envelopes me with care and fierce truth. She moves around me, strands of light weaving and being woven. I am held deeply now. Her language is beyond time, it is beyond words. It is pure feeling. It lands gently and tears begin to flow down my cheeks. Tears of deep gratitude. I now rest easy. My ability to sense the unseen has deepened again. It's become a rite of passage. In these last few days I've lit a candle and as I do, I drift between here and somewhere else. My prayers of thanks dedicated to Freya. Bridget, Odin and the reindeer mother. And all those that teach me knowing, known and unknown, seen and unseen. I feel deeply held by them and those that love me. Healing is not pretty, yet it is beautiful. My journey has led me along a path and wove me into the centre. Nothing will ever be the same. How can it be? It's somehow deeper, richer. These times are calling for fierce, loving truth. Freya, I thank you, mistress of magic, of healing and of love, beloved goddess. You quite often hear me talk about Bridget, especially as we have mo moved from the dreaming, the dreaming of winter into the awakening of spring. But yet, over these last few weeks, I felt, especially last week, um, being a part of that wonderful journey, wonderful journey at my um, dear dad's land, and I felt 
Freya leaning into that space and that beautiful experience I've just shared with you and, and, and read to you is I remember just kind of gazing into the flames and then gazing skywards and just feeling her presence almost wrap itself around me. And this last weekend, as we prepared for the lodge on our family's land, on my dear dad's land, on the Thursday morning before arriving at New Woodland to begin setting up, uh, dad and I dropped into Hever Castle. What a beautiful place that is. Um, and they had um, a wonderful and lovely craft fair afoot in the most beautiful setting and we wandered around um, and I gravitated towards this blacksmith stall and he was um, busy working with his mobile forge and there just very gently sitting on the table was this small snake that he had cast uh, and forged out of iron and for a few seconds I held it and then very gently placed it back down um, yet that simple snake spoke to me you know it was all these stalls and I just gravitated towards the forge and there on the table was this wonderful very simple rustic snake and I remember just kind of scooping it up and holding it in my hand for a few moments then I think dad called me and I very gently placed it back on the table walked away and as it did I picked up a card but yet that simple snake spoke to me I felt somehow magnetized towards it and just to think there we were preparing for a lodge a sweat lodge and just to think that snake was crafted out of iron and forged from fire. And if any of you understand the principles around a sweat lodge is that there's a, a very intentional, very, very, very solid fire crafted and made to heat up for several hours granite rocks. And when we're talking about, you know, a snake crafted out of iron and forged from fire, I just find those things fascinating. You know, these things are beyond beautiful. As we often say, it's never by chance. It's all by design. Um, the medicine was showing up before we sat together. And I know in my heart it will... Oh, I know for sure it will continue long after we have then ten of us that over those days gathered together and our humble village came alive it came back to life after its long winter's rest and ancient songs and drum beats carried and it becomes such a beautiful place of sharing, remembrance and deep healing. We crawled into the lodge. Humbly crawling into the lodge. And if you can imagine the lodge is just covered, a hazel structure, a dome like structure covered with blankets and canvas, blankets, canvas. And then inside, it's like this really, really dark space. And it's like almost like crawling into the earth herself. Or well, the other metaphor is like it's going back into the womb, back into the darkness, back into the beginnings. So it was such a beautiful place of sharing and remembrance and healing. And we crawled into the lodge ushering in the darkness and then blessed water was being poured over the hot rocks that were brought in by the fire keeper 
on a fork, a long pitchfork, and placed into the centre pit where the rocks rest. And then they're blessed with water and releasing steam and heat. The temperature rises and together we go back to the beginning. The bare earth is our gateway. That reality is a silent experience beyond words. It is in this silence that deep healing and medicine occurs. And snake become our medicine. The teachers that were with us, the guides, physical teachers that were with us, coming from a Inca tradition and a Native American Indian tradition, First Nation. And they were talking about that snake was the medicine for the weekend. Those of you that know me, followed my videos for a little while, you'll know about the medicine story there that sits on my hand. You know, snake become our medicine, a symbol of medicine for thousands of years all over the world. Behind time is eternity, the true nature of life. And I felt myself being transported back to the first encounter of Snake, for she has become a powerful teacher to me. And I'm going to share my very first encounter with Snake that happened during a power animal journey by an incredible teacher and mentor, Ivan Macbeth, many, 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 many years ago. And after a while, I felt myself dissolve. So we, we took this power animal journey where we go deep down into the earth. And for me, when I go journeying, I go into this, this cave on the side of a mountain. Uh, a mountain that I know very well. When I go down into this cave on the side of this mountain. And as I go in, there's water dripping from the from the top of the cavern and the cave there's a small river stream that runs through the cave and I plummet down down into the earth and after a while I popped out on this heathland and I'm looking for this this power animal and I'm looking and looking thinking where is this 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 guide teacher power animal and then suddenly I gravitate take towards this dry stone wall and the sun is just coming up the beginnings of a new day and the sun's just coming up over the horizon and it's just casting some light across the heathland and touching this dry stone wall and after a while I felt myself dissolve and then I look and I look and think where is this animal and suddenly I see this adder curled up tight against this dry stone wall as if she's waiting for the sun to rise to warm her and I felt myself dissolve as if I was seeing through her eyes alert still like a deep stillness aware lying against the frozen earth and I felt so grounded. Then as the sun slowly rose up above the hill. The sun reaching the dry stone wall more fully. I felt its warmth. I felt an awakening from the depths of night. The coldness slowly falling away. And after some time I felt as if she was focused on moving towards the heathland on the edge of a small copse of trees and I felt she was about to move yet she was moving with intention 
extreme focus and clarity. It felt sharpened. And then she moved swiftly, fast, and then rested amongst the heath once again in the sunlight. Now her medicine and teachings were so profound. She's taught me to discern how we use our energy, to deeply know where to place it, to where it adds the greatest value, where it makes the most difference in our lives and the lives of those around us, for it to not be wasted. And I remember, you know, some of you know the story, I'm you know, going in for um, an operation many, 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 many years ago on my uh, right leg. And um, very, very, very difficult walking into that hospital. And as I was ready to be discharged home, I remember my physio, amazing, incredible lady. It turned out to be a Reiki therapist. These things are never by chance, are they? And um, she had worked with me, wonderful lady, and she said to me, you know, um, what do you want to do? Take the short ride or the steady long walk out? And that goes back to spending time with her in the beginning. And she asked, you know, what is it you want from your recovery? And I went to walk out of here. And I remember kind of standing there in the doorway at the threshold between the hospital and the outside world. And, and it was a beautiful, beautiful sunny day. It was a really, really beautiful sunny day. And I remember very gently closing my eyes and feeling the warmth of that sunlight on my face and thinking to myself, okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom and depths of my heart, thank you, thank you for being able to walk out of here. And from this day on, I will strive to never, ever, ever waste another single moment. And I remember feeling the powerful medicine that was sparked and crafted and created within that single moment. And then Snake, she, she, you know come back at that at that time you know the experience is way beyond before that but yet in that moment it was like it was as, as if her medicine was moving through me again the sunlight on the face and not wasting a single moment and full of full of deep gratitude and those things you know they do they just they they stir and they move and they 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 move back through us powerful humbling teachings and this is why she sits on my hand above the wayfinder i've shared that before but that's where and why she sits on my hand above the wayfinder and all these years later last week there under that parachute and amongst old and new friends she taught me to simply lie on the beloved earth as children we used to lie on the ground did we not and just like gaze up into the clouds or lie on the ground and sometimes even fall asleep you know i think as adults we forget the importance of lying on the earth or which is too uncomfortable to do it but there I did, I laid very, very, very simply, tongue tied, very simply on that beloved earth and held with such care and grace by those that walk this path with so much heart. And in doing so, I felt all the physical heaviness, what we call hucha, heavy energy, all the heavy energy, all the kind of discomfort all the pain simply fall away simply dissolve and i remember thinking to myself that's profound healing we forget sometimes 
how simple and how powerful healing can be. When I come back and I just could feel myself adjusting, adjusting, adjusting as you come back into <laughs> what what may be seen as the everyday and last night I felt this 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 urge to kind of really discern where I am placing that that time and attention and for some time now I felt real tangle with um, certain aspects of social media Facebook especially um, and I just knew I just knew without any doubt that it had to go um, and I will be very gently sending out a newsletter more about that so if you'd like to know a little bit more about that medicine story be sure to sign up to the newsletter um, and I just really really could feel you know this is a this is a tangle that has been going on you know f for for many many years and actually pre-pandemic times I was off it and then I went back to it during the pandemic um, but you know my dreams really messaging and really nudging me um, to move away and last night I just knew without any any doubt that snake medicine just shedding that skin completely all in one go and it's gone um, as I say a newsletter is going to be covering more of that um, but I just wanted to share some of that medicine story with you um, you know these journeys can be very very profound and journeys with um, community can be really really deeply profound you know we don't heal in isolation we heal in community um, and it is the dance between solitude and connection which I think in equal measure is deep medicine in itself um, and solitude is different to you know being alone or loneliness deep solitude and nourishment you know I've been to some really remote places spent days upon days upon days you know by myself but I never ever ever feel lonely because I feel deeply connected and held by those that hold me in their hearts um, and uh, I think it is it's 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 kind of you know nourishing that that movement between those two spaces but there you are for those of you that are um, connected with us to us with beyond the hedge we are going to be weaving a deeper insight around earthing earthing rooting and grounding and the medicine around that um, and some real practical insights and um, path working steps to take but in the meantime watch out for that newsletter that I give you a deeper understanding of what moved through me last night um, regarding the social media and um, yeah um, until next time keep shining and sending you all so much love